This shaft is stuck on this drill press. This is what the uh, motor assembly, I guess we'll call it, hangs on. And I can't get it out of there right now. So, I decided to make myself a tool. This is not it. This is kind of the idea of what I'm envisioning. Something that clamps onto that shaft. And hopefully I can use this bolt up here. This is the tensioner for the motor. To uh, push the shaft out. And I think is what I'm going to do with the materials I have on hand is these three quarter inch by inch and a half bars and make them clamp on there like that. So I think the first thing I need to do is bolt them together like this and then we'll bore the hole in them. And while this is not a complicated part, I decided to draw it in Fusion 360 just because I'm trying to teach myself Fusion 360. the two bolts put in it and I have to say that is just nice and flush. So the next step is to set this thing up here on this and we'll put an inch and a half hole in there. I'm trying to make another decision here. I want to put a spacer in there to bring it out because you know if I just have these bolted together you know and make an inch and a half hole in there, it won't clamp down on that shaft, right? Then I'd have to go back and remove some material. Or I can put in a spacer and machine it that way and then it'll clamp down tighter. But do I use 19 thousandths or 28 thousandths? Yeah, I'd probably better go 30. I'd hate to goof up and have to figure out how to machine some off of those. I used my rolling center in the headstock here, in the spindle, and a couple of machinist clamps and have it clamped on there. I'm going to use a 15 30 seconds drill bit. How did I arrive at using that size? Well, I've never actually used this drill bit before. It's still got all the sticky goop on it. I don't even know if I ever pulled it out of the box. This bit is not sharpened correctly. As you can see, it goes uphill. This is the cutting edge. And you can see that it rubs back here on this very back point. So it doesn't cut very well. It does it on both sides that way. It's wearing back there as it's drilling. But I'm actually going to use that one here since this is an interrupted cut. I think maybe it'll help keep it from grabbing ear at or I snap the bit. I don't know. We'll see.
added another clamp. I just felt like it was moving a little bit over here. That's why I had my hand on the uh, compound here, feeling that. It didn't feel rock solid. debated about which boring bar to use, but I decided to use my Morris Taper 3 boring bar. And I'm still running at 90 RPM. I thought about kicking back up to 250, but it's an interrupted cut. I think I'm going to go slow. I don't know. I can't decide if going slow or fast is good for an interrupted cut. Oh, I thought they moved a lot. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work being an interrupted cut. So, we'll stick my long boring bar in here. That way we can support it with the live center. And the idea of this boring bar is the same as the other one. I have a bit that goes in here, and I just adjust it in and out according to how big I want the hole. I put the lathe into high. We'll spin her at 250 RPM. I'm gonna bring the bit out just a little bit more. I need a pair of spring calipers. I saw, I don't know if it was actually a company that did that or just a person that did that. It's their own hack, but I took a pair of spring calipers and then bent them over 90 on the end so they could reach in there and measure that inside bore. I'm like, that is genius. I need to do that. So I need to go hop on eBay and see if I can find myself an old pair of spring calipers cheap because it's a pain in the butt to reach in there um, with this setup because, well, you can't reach in there. I was thinking about how the uh, cross slide, you know, it's got play in it. So when the boring bar goes around, it goes back and forth, you know. The play shows up, I guess you could say. And I was thinking I should just take a pillow block bearing, bolt it down back here, and have that bearing right on that shaft. That would keep the compound in line with that shaft. That would actually allow me to take a little more aggressive cuts, too. I think that looks really good. I'm very happy with that. Oh yeah, that is really nice. Well, shaft still don't come out. I'm gonna use the bolt that, you know, pushes the motor back. Originally supposed to push the shaft in and out. Got a spacer block in there so I don't ruin my fancy tool I made. Well, ruin it by putting, you know, bolt marks in it. Might ruin it by bending it or breaking it or something. But I'm going to try that first, see if it pushes this shaft at all. But probably going to need something in here. Because that's just up there. Yeah, I don't think that's going anywhere. I'm going to get a brass hammer and give it some love taps. I don't think it's moving. It is moving. Holy crap. The shaft moved right in there. I can see it. Well, this is easier than I expected then. Heck yeah. We're going to get somewhere with this. 
If I had another bolt, you know, so I could tighten up here and here at the same time, I think we just walk right out of there. Nice. Oh, I'm very excited about this. Another task completed in no time. Just, you know, not counting the four hours of machining. That's pretty awesome. Well, that tool will be pretty handy. I'm very happy I made that. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Are you excited? The tool's done. Oh, come on, it's more exciting than that. <laughs>